Who is David Porter? Had you always wanted to be an entrepreneur and run your own business? Are you ready for some quick fire, rapid fire questions? Welcome to the Jod Pod, a micro podcast where we interview CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs, coaches, and authors. Today, we are joined by David Porter, CEO of TPC Global. Great to have you with us today, David. Thanks, great to be here. So for those of us who don't know you, who is David Porter? What do you do? Yeah, as you know, I'm the CEO of TPC Global. Um, we're a channel analytics company based out in Prague. But for your UK listeners, I am English, as you can probably tell. Um, I grew up in Reading and I went to university in, uh, in Cheltenham. Uh, worked in sales for a few years in, in London um, and then moved over to uh, Prague in 2010 when I got a job at Cisco Systems and then set up my, my company um, in 2014. Um, and yeah, that's been that's basically the story outside of work. Um, basically, I have a wife and, and a small daughter, so we, I spend most of my time with them. We're quite active. Um, we like to be outside a lot and um, with whatever's left I try and do a bit of reading that's basically my life wonderful thanks for, thanks there David so t- TPC Global you've been going for seven years was nearly that... yeah six yeah. and a bit yeah. yep six and a bit uh, had you always wanted to be an entrepreneur and run your own business I think so I mean when I when I was a kid I'd do the typical thing about trying to make money I'd mow people's lawns and doing that from about 14 I, I learned some pretty bad um, I had, had a couple of interesting bad experiences where I just wasn't doing a good enough job and I didn't know how to do certain things they'd ask me to start to weed out weed out flower beds and I'd be like yeah great because that's going to take another hour and I'll get another four pounds you know and um and then I'd start weeding out flowers by mistake and yeah there's just stupid stuff and um but then after university I, I joined a I joined a startup straight away, so I immediately had um, had this experience of being in a six-man startup, which was for for uh, for most. I think most people in the UK will will know the companies, but you know, like the super dry label um, of uh, uh, jackets and clothing, and whatever. Sure. This came out of the Colt Clothing, um, the Colt Clothing Group, um, run by a guy called Julian, um, who used to be just a market trader in the 80s uh, i mean a i mean a, a mar- not a banking trader he used to just sell t-shirts printed t-shirts and now he's i think 400 million um 400 million dollar business um and he was based in cheltenham and he wanted a magazine so six of us basically he put he put i think 60k in and we we were running this magazine and we just flunked we just failed it in six months like he just kept putting a bit more money and then said look guys you just you, you're rubbish you know it's not working and um oh, man. and it really showed me like i was doing sales and and basically advertising for the magazine at that time and i was terrible at it but i kind of stuck with it um i i i went and then worked for another small company in uh, more in the music area in london and uh, that went a little bit better but it was really amazing some of those learning curves and then i didn't i didn't think about entre- entrepreneurship uh for quite a while afterwards because I was enjoying working in bigger companies and getting the pay packet. And, um, and then once I joined Cisco and started to, I was lucky enough to be in some quite high visibility teams and working with data. By that time I was in, um, in the kind of uh, analysis space of, of jobs. And, um, I was lucky enough to work with kind of global data for a global company and see top down so strategies and, you know how they're looking to do things and seeing where gaps are and it just was then my kind of aha moment of there are so many opportunities here and if that's happening with this kind of market leader i'm sure these these uh, opportunities are existing you know in in smaller or more emerging um it vendors so that's what then triggered me to work out how to exit out of cisco and and start the company so yeah, that's my entrepreneurial story. That's wonderful. Do you, do you remember, I suppose you can answer this question in two different ways, but one thing I always like to find out is where people uh, got their first customer from. And I suppose you can tell me where you got your first lawn mowing customer from. 
and then maybe where you got your oh, first, oh, yeah. your sure. first <laughs> entrepreneur, you know, prop, you know, real big, big business customer from. Yeah, well, lawnmower. That was my my dad um, had a friend he played golf with who was much more senior, and um, he he was really keen gardener. I mean, the, his friend was a really keen gardener, and then he um, he was much lesser able bodied, you know, at some at one point in time. And he needed he needed help, so my dad said, "Yeah, you know, my son can help you." I knew he knew him anyway, and um, yeah, no matter how long it took, he gave me four pounds. So I could be there, you know, for two hours, two and a half hours, and I'd still get four pounds. But then he had somebody else uh, he was working with because he was a he was a kind of small business owner as well. He had at the time he had a he had a company that was before the internet and a lot of digital uh, digitalization happened. He was um, he was doing a uh, uh, he had a company that was translating um, business documents right from French into English and from German into English and vice versa. So he had a couple of um, he had some people there and there was a local woman who was translating and then they said, yeah, we don't have time to sort our garden out. So I started doing two jobs. So that was that was that was lawn mowing. Um, just following a, following and then the network the, there that sounded like just uh... Yes, yeah, yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> with my my dad leading the way, and then um, with TPC, um, I had a an old boss who had become a director at um, a different company at, at VMware, and he said we were just staying in touch. And and at some point when I was starting anyway to think, uh, maybe I was moaning at him anyway, saying, "Oh, things have changed," and whatever I don't know. But he'd started to say, "Well, you know, we've got we're trying to do things that." Cisco were doing, you know, when I was there, when we were working together, I'm trying to now put them in place. And, um, you know, if, if you're looking at making a move, then, and I, would, I just sort of jumped. I remember how, how probably pathetic I sounded at first because I was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Let's do it. And he was like, no, no, wait a minute. It's a big decision, Dave, you know, big decision to like leave Cisco. Cause I, by that point I was an employee, not just being contracted. Um, but I, I already had it fairly well mapped out. Um, you know, how to set up the company and, you know, what I wanted to do. And yeah, he became the first, the first client. And, uh, I just swapped pretty much straight, straight over. I just started billing from the, from the, the, the company account and, uh, yeah. So it was an old boss. Brilliant. Brilliant. I think that's for any new entrepreneurs or people that are thinking about starting their own business out there. I think it's so interesting to hear about those first few customers because it's often the, the, the big difference from being a, an employee to an entrepreneur is that first customer, you know, not building a website or building yep. anything else out. It's like, how can you get that first dollar or pound or, or euro into your account? And how can you do that as quickly as possible? Um, Absolutely. That's, that's really nice to hear. Thanks for that. So, so tell me more about uh, TPC Global. So like I said, 2014 was where it began. It was more like a consultancy service at that point. Um, so I had these kind of skills or specialisms in this channel um channel analysis so um any anyone who's worked in a in a in a global business probably understands the terminology of channels and routes to markets but you know um uh, this is what i've been in especially the distribution area um but i was then basically fronting projects back with cisco vmware some of the other big companies for a few years started to build a a little um, team around me, which was really nice. And I had, I never had more than five plus me, six, a few freelancers here and there. Never, never got to say 10 people, it was just always a few, um, a few people. Cause we never had, we never had so many projects at one time, you know? Um, but that was fine until maybe 2017. And then, yeah, maybe two, two and a half years ago, maybe three years ago, we'd started to find that it was, we'd, we'd lost a couple of kind of um, renewals of contracts and we were struggling to find it, just something had changed at that point that we were really struggling to find new projects. And it just kind of dawned on me that um, at, before that point, it was easier to say to people, you know, here's, here's our skills, here's our backgrounds, here's what we've done a few times with, you know, companies that you know, and you'd probably get, you probably get some kind of starting point, whether it's a proof of concept or whether it's a small project, you'd get some foot in the door. 
but that was all gone away and it, and it was really because the bigger companies had started to invest internally in big analytics teams and business intelligence teams and things like this and they even though they weren't maybe still getting good enough um outcomes you know internally they'd invested in it and they weren't going to go third party you know so we decided at that point that we would um basically pivot the company into being tool led so that was quite a big thing i had to invest a little bit of money to do it but we we basically realized that unless we're coming with a kind of solution that's a little bit more ready made we're not maybe going to get the project where we just go look we work in this space have you got something you know so we looked at projects we'd done maybe 35 of them at that point in time and we realized they kind of all came generally into about three categories and those were like um supporting their distribution strategy with you know um right sizing the distribution market and gap analysis and and um how to kind of improve that area of the channel the second was around proper targeted way of, of analyzing the reseller base and potentially the customer base and the third was in um competitive pricing insights because the market for competitive pricing insights is there there's lots of price monitoring companies but they're not really giving brands what they want they give resellers what they want so we were kind of seeing that they were looking for market pricing data and we'd started to do a couple of projects already so we basically built three tools instead that covered covered off these three things we called them distribution optimization reseller analytics and we branded the 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 pricing um, the competitive pricing side under a price mark brand and there's a couple of tools um, in there so yeah that's really what we did i mean my perspective on it was that in in matrix organizations which are what you know these big companies are it's not just it of course it's like all of the um all of the um industry sectors um these multinationals there's so much opportunity to 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 go in i mean you go into one place and they say no it's not for us bigger there's a lot to be said for actually being small and i mean the more i've spoken to the bigger companies they 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 don't mind working with small suppliers you know on in in lots of different areas because they understand the flexibility they get you know when they say can you do this instead of that or can you add this and remove that or you know we're the ones who are going to find a way to do it you know because we don't have all these structures and processes in place that 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 inhibit it that's, that's awesome thank you so much for sharing are you ready for some quick fire rapid fire questions let's do it what's your favorite app or SaaS product that you use every day uh it has to be Trello because you know when when we pivoted the company a couple of years ago, and we'd started building out, you know, basically software applications. This was just it was a necessity actually to find something with you know we we haven't had an office for, well since before the pandemic, so you know we got people in different places. It was just you know I'm really really bad at project managing. I'm terrible at it, so I had to kind of get over myself to do this. But now I'm now I got into it a couple of years ago. I I love it. I mean, it's just it just it's nonsense not to use a collaboration tool like this. Um, so for that, Tre- Trello's Trello's great. I I use it for you know personal business stuff like administration stuff, anything reminders. It's just great. Um, David, what's your most recommend? Um, I actually I have it right here. I have a couple of I have a, a mix of books that are on my. Um, uh, I have to move out of the way. You can see them there. They're on my on my desk. There's a um, couple of business books, and, and the rest are kind of you know non-fiction. I'm saying uh, the 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 one it's a so it's a business book, and it's this one. It's called it's called Distribution Channels, and it's got by a guy called Julian Dent, who I came to actually know for a while um, because he he was running some he was running some um, uh, some sessions inside of uh, one of the companies I was working for and it's just total go-to book if you want to understand um, how how businesses like set up channels and distribution teams and how they kind of you know how they go to market and and how they develop that and understand like what what really if you're an inside salesperson or if you're working in a distributor or you're part you're a managed service provider anywhere that's in the channel 
it's just absolute gold. I mean, it gives you all the reasons why things happen. And, you know, you, it's, you can dip into it. It's very well written. It's an absolute brilliant book. I'm still dipping. Um, who's your uh, favourite YouTuber or podcaster? That's pretty easy, and it's been has been for quite a while. It's um, you you may you may know them. Um, it's a podcast called Tropical MBA. Um, so they're two guys, um, Dan and Ian. They're based in um, US, uh, US, yeah. Um, Dan Anderson, Ian Schoen, and they've got a back catalogue now of maybe five hundred plus podcasts. And if you're an entrepreneur, they they started off basically as the you know, if you wanted to be a digital nomad, you know, and work from anywhere, that was that was why they set up. But it's kind of morphed, even though they still stick to that as like, you know, as their, you know, one of their foundation stones of who their audience is. Like the content is just amazing. I mean, they do like hour to an hour and a half podcast. They interview people from different different sectors of the market. And it's it's all aimed at their audience who are entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs. Yeah, but I, I know a lot of people that have been uh, on it and uh, do, rave, yep. do rave about it. So um, I'll I'll make sure we link up we link up to that. Thank you, um, David. Who do you think who's yep. an up and comer? Yep. Who's who's going to be the next Elon Musk? Thinking about this, uh, my natural thought actually went to went to my first thought went to Ben Francis, right? Jim Jim Shark, who's already and I mean he's the CMO, right? But He's he set up the company, and he's you know the company's already huge, but I kind of thought of him because he's 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 young and he's on that like lower tier let's say of I mean yeah. it's funny for me to call him on a lower tier but I mean if you're going to compare him to Elon Musk or to um, or to you know uh, Jeff Bezos or somebody like what the reason why I wanted to mention him is because he's he's the one from the generation who like they they were born into mm. social media born into digital and what if anybody investigates how he's done what he's doing it's that he totally understood the customer in this new world of of digital of of social and i don't think he's ever going to go away from that i think he's so much at the forefront of it that even if Jim Shark is and what he's doing still in 10 years time he's gonna I, I think he's gonna be able to make a success of whatever he does um that was the one that came to mind there was also Andrew Wilkinson if you know Andrew Wilkinson who's who's also kind of already already there in many ways but he's um uh so he has a tiny.com if you look up tiny.com um Andrew Wilkinson they, they do micro investments into small businesses which is like a it's been described as like the Berkshire Hathaway, right? Of of internet. A couple of podcasts. He's a smart, smart guy, and what they're doing at Tiny dot com is really. I, I think it's so fascinating the way that people talk about him. As, as you say, the future, uh, the future buffet. Uh, buffet. Yep. What am I saying? Buffet. <laughs> Buffet. <laughs> uh, David, where's the best place for people to find you online and uh, get in contact with you if they've liked anything they've heard? Uh, I'm trying to do as much as I can, actually staying on LinkedIn. I think it's I think it's really going to become a native go to place for for industry industry B two B information. So I'm kind of sticking with that. I mean, obviously, I have I have the website. Um, I have a YouTube channel, um, which is TPC Global. Um, you know, you can easily. That's awesome, David. Thank you. There we have it. David Porter is the CEO of TPC Global, an analytics company providing expertise to support channel sales. He managed to get his first customer, his lawnmower customer, through a family friend, through his dad pushing him towards cutting the lawn. David's favorite app is Trello, which he uses to run his uh, distributed team. Um, his most recommended book is Distribution Channels by Julian Dent. Uh, which looks very interesting as a way of connect uh, uh, understanding channel sales and how the channel works for large enterprises. He loves listening to the Tropical NBA, and he thinks that we should be keeping an eye on two people uh, as potential s even more superstars, uh, Ben Francis of Gymshark and Andrew Wilkinson of Tiny.com. And you can find out more about David and the work he's doing at TPC Global by heading... Uh, to LinkedIn, reaching out directly with David. We'll put a link in the show notes below. 
and uh, seeing the content that he shares there on LinkedIn. David, thanks for joining us today on The Jod Pod. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today uh, on The Jod Pod for today's interview with David. To ensure that you don't miss out on any of these episodes, please play the YouTube game. Hit subscribe, hit like, bang the bell. And also, ask David a question in the comments below. I'm sure he will jump in and answer any questions you've got about B2B sales, about starting a business, uh, about living abroad, uh, maybe even about starting a lawnmower business. Who knows? Um, every question you ask is going to help out this video. It's going to help out David. It's going to help out our future uh, guests. And we'll be able to get back to every single question that you drop below. So hopefully you've been inspired by David. Go build something yourself and inspire the next generation. Thanks for joining us today on The Jod Pod. If you enjoyed this interview, why don't you check out some of these other interviews that we've done on The Jod Pod. More inspirational CEOs, coaches, entrepreneurs, founders and authors. I'm sure there's something here that will inspire you to build something new.